Do you have a 2007 to a 2014 Cadillac Escalade? Well, I just traded up to a 2008 Cadillac Escalade ESV with a 6.2 Vortex engine in it. If you have one of these years, you probably want to check out my channel. In there, I will show you tons of repairs that you can do yourself with very little tools. It'll save you tons of money than rather you going to the dealership to have the work done. Just click up on the right hand corner and it'll take you to my playlist. But before we get started, please don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell. Believe it or not, this really helps me to continue making these repair videos. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I had an emergency trip that I had to make early in the morning. I had to pick up some hot, warm donuts at a donut store. When I got in the car and started it, I started to hear a noise. So just like you, I popped the hood to see what's going on. And this is what I heard. The first thing I thought was, it could be the bearings on my tensioners or it could be an alternator bearing going out, or worse yet, it could be my water pump, or it could be the fan belts. There's two of them, a serpentine belt and an AC belt. As you already know, I just got this vehicle, so I don't know when the belts were last changed. So before I start tearing apart stuff and checking stuff, I'm gonna focus on the serpentine belts. The reason being is that I don't know when the previous owner changed the belts. And if you guys out there already know me by now, typically when I buy a vehicle, I do a lot of stuff to it. Like change the belts, change the battery, starter, alternator, brakes, and so forth. The reason why I do that is so I can have peace of mind. I don't want to be broken down somewhere just because I want to be frugal and save money. The way I look at it, if I fix it now, I don't have to fix it later. When I'm out in the middle of the road and have to hire a tow truck to bring me home. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I start tearing everything apart, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace the fan belts and see if that fixes anything. It's the cheapest and easiest thing to fix. Later in the afternoon, I inspected the fan belts. There were no cracks. The fan belts looked good, but they did look a little dry. So I'm just wondering, they were just dry and brittle. So let's get to work. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is remove this top cover. This cover just snaps in. So to remove it, you're gonna lift up and then move towards the front of the car, as shown. You can see where the two red arrows are at is where it connects in the back. There's two posts in the back. And the second set of arrows shows you where it snaps in. And it snaps in these two posts here. Okay, now we're going to remove this large plastic snorkel. Now, don't get nervous about this. There's no water or oil in this. All it has is air in it. The first thing you're gonna do is take off two hose clamps. You'll see them where the red arrows are at. Just use a flat screwdriver. I'm using a screwdriver with a socket at the end of it. Now, one thing I want to do to warn you is that there's a plastic grommet right here. At the point you start to remove this snorkel, you may lose this rubber grommet. So pay close attention, maybe even have your hands on it so you don't lose it as you remove the snorkel. Okay, the next thing you're going to look at is on the left side of the snorkel, you're going to remove this hose. I just went ahead and removed the whole thing. It's really easy to reinstall. Now you're going to need to remove this hose that's clipped on to the snorkel. It's a plastic nipple, so to speak, that's barbed. So just take your screwdriver and work it loose. 
If you have one of those door panel removal tools, it'll probably be a lot easier to remove. It's just made out of plastic. Now everything should be loose and you'll be able to pull this thing out. You're going to have to play with it a little bit, but you can get it out. Now, I want to stop you at this point. So everything that you've done so far to this point, you're probably going to have to do every time you repair your vehicle. Removing that top cover and removing this snorkel. So get used to it. The top cover, the snorkel and you are going to become one one day. Now that we got everything out of the way, we can start to remove the two belts. You're going to want to grab a 15 millimeter long wrench or you can buy one of these. It's a serpentine belt removal tool. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight for about 15 bucks. Anyway, just go ahead, put the wrench in and turn the wrench clockwise and you'll see the serpentine belt get loose. Just go ahead and pull the belt off. Okay, now that we're done with that, we're going to jack up the car and put a jack stand for safety. Don't forget to block the back of your tire and we're going to go underneath the car. Once you're under there, you're going to look for the tensioner and it's right here, right where the red arrow's at. You're going to take your ratchet with a short 3 8 extension. You're going to find in the tensioner wheel there, there's going to be a square hole. You're going to put your tool in there and turn that also clockwise and you'll see that the belt gets loose. Once it's loose, go ahead and pull the belt off. It's that simple. Okay, we're just about halfway done. So these are the two fan belts that I got. So you can see the serial numbers here. They're Gates fan belts. They're pretty good quality. You can find these really cheap online or go to your local parts store. Okay, so now we're gonna go back down underneath the car and we're gonna install our AC fan belt. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your fan belt in position, work it in. You're gonna first put the fan belt around the large pulley. Then around the tensioner. And then go ahead, put your wrench in, turn it clockwise and you should be able to put it on the pulley that's on the AC pump. It's really not that hard. Just be careful not to pinch your fingers. Double check that your belt is in there correctly. Take a moment and look at it to make sure it's in there like it's supposed to be. All right, good job. Okay, we're all done down here. So go ahead and remove your jack stand and go ahead and use your jack to lower the car back down. And now we're gonna work on the top side. 
Okay, here what I'm doing is checking my wheels and bearings on my tensioners. As I turn it with my fingers, it seems like the wheels are moving pretty freely. I am hearing a little bit of grinding because the bearings are probably dry. So I'm going to go ahead and just use a little 3-in-1 oil and put it in both these uh, pulley wheels in the bearing area. Already I can tell they feel and sound a lot better. So you definitely want to do this. I'm pretty sure I'm going to change these in the future, but for right now, I think I'm good. Make sure you take a rag and wipe up any excess oil. You don't want to get that in your serpentine belt. I did also turn the pulley on the water pump and it felt pretty good. Nothing was loose. So I think I'm okay so far. But I am definitely going to change it here in the near future. So watch for that video. Okay, it's time to put the serpentine belt back on. This again is going to be really easy to do. Okay, did you take a picture of the serpentine belt to remember the pattern? No problems, we got it right here. Okay, so number one, you're going to first wrap it around the large pulley at the bottom. Then number two, you're going to wrap it around the water pump. Then number three, you're going to wrap it around the power steering pump. Then number four, alternator. Then number five. Then on the tensioner on the upper left side there. Then you're going to put downward pressure so it's going to wrap around the idler pulley. You'll notice you can't get it around there. So at this point, you're going to put your wrench into the tensioner on the left there. And you're going to turn it clockwise. As you're turning it clockwise, you'll be able to slip the serpentine belt around that idler pulley. Once you got it in there, turn your wrench counterclockwise and everything will get tightened up. And you're done. Now just double check that everything's in there correctly. Once you feel confident that it's in there correctly, Go ahead and test to see if everything's on there correctly by turning on the car and see if anything fell off or making funny noises. All right, you got it all in. Turn off your engine. Now all we have to do is put the air snorkel back in. Just go ahead and do the reverse process and again be careful with that grommet don't forget to put that short hose in snap in your hose tying up the hose clamps go ahead and put the top lid on and you're all done see it's that simple you saved yourself a couple of hundred bucks easily. Okay, the next morning came up. So I got up about 7 o'clock in the morning to start the car to see if it made the same noise. And this is what it sounded like. Now let me play the previous video how it sounded like before. Do you notice the big difference? Well, I think we did a good job here. Alright, looks like we're all done. Well, I hope I get to see you in my next video. Bye! Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it was very informative. Please check out my other how-to videos. Oh, and check out my new website. There's new items being put in there every day. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, hit the bell. Until then, we'll see you at my next video. Bye.